right, we'll get started here. We've got a crowd. So what we're talking about today is the seventh nerve. I'm going to talk about anatomy. Russell's going to go over kind of applied anatomy and clinical syndromes of the seventh nerve. And then Brian's going to review the phacomatoses, which are a very high yield subject. Uh, so uh, anatomy of the seventh nerve. Um, so you can see the nuclei here uh, in this picture. Um, uh, represented here, and you can see its relation compared to the sixth nerve nucleus here. So the seventh nerve nucleus uh, gets uh, supranuclear input from the precentral gyrus for voluntary facial movement, and actually gets some innervation as well from the basal ganglia, which uh, controls involuntary blinking. Uh, uh, it's important to remember that the, uh, as far as supranuclear input uh, from the precentral gyrus, the uh, upper face gets bilateral innervation. Um, so that's why you can see kind of these brown and yellow lines here going to both nuclei. Upper face gets bilateral innervation, but the lower face is only contralateral. Um, so that's why if you get, if there's, if there's some lesion that's affecting supranuclear input uh, on the left side, you're going to get contralateral right, uh, just lower face uh, paralysis. Um, here's another you know, simple representation of some of the anatomy of, of the nuclei. Um, so you can see the nucleus is ventral lateral to the sixth nerve. And the fascicle kind of wraps uh, dorsally and medially and goes back around the sixth nerve nucleus and then comes anteriorly again uh, for the nerve to exit right at the pontomedullary junction. Um, so you can certainly see how brainstem syndromes would affect the sixth and seventh nerve plus pyramidal tract and, and uh, other structures in the area. Um, so this is a nice graphic off stat DX that shows um, the seventh nerve kind of right as it exits the brain stem right at the pontomedullary junction. It runs a little bit in the, the subarachnoid space. And then it enters the petrous part of the temporal bone, which is this kind of whole area here. And the opening that it enters is called the internal uh, acoustic meatus. Um, and then uh, here's another view of the kind of brain stem, all the cranial nerves, as you can see where the facial nerve uh, exits in relation to the others. Um, there's the sixth and the eighth, so it comes out right between those. And another view kind of showing that facial nerve going through the internal acoustic meatus to the petrous part of the temporal bone. Um, uh, while it's, I, I skipped ahead here, but while it's actually in the temporal bone, a few things happen. So um, kind of what's bundled in the seventh nerve is motor fibers, which is what we usually pay attention to. There's also parasympathetic fibers. Those originate at the superior salivatory nucleus in the brainstem, and those carry parasympathetic, inter parasympathetic innervation to the lacrimal and submandibular and sublingual salivary glands. Uh, and then also in the, in the temporal bone, the corda tympani nerve comes off from the facial nerve, and that is what carries uh, 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 actually taste, uh, taste information, so it's an afferent pathway for the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. And then the facial nerve, uh, kind of the main branch, or this motor branch, uh, exits the skull out the stylomastoid foramen here. And then it branches into five, uh, five branches that go to innervate all these muscles of the face. And um, there's a mnemonic I learned as an undergrad for remembering these. Does anyone know that? To Zanzibar by motor car. So that stands for to Zanzibar by motor car. So temporal, branches, zygomatic, buccal, 
uh, mandibular, and submandibular isn't part of that mnemonic. That just must be another little branch off the mandibular. And then the cervical branch is the last one there. Um, so this kind of branches into five, th these five kind of main branches in the parotid gland. So it kind of dissects right, right between two lobes of the parotid gland. Um, so this is an axial T2 weighted MRI that shows the uh, root exit zone of the seventh nerve, which is the more medial, <coughs> and the eighth nerve is coming off just lateral to that. Um, and so you can see that seventh nerve, you can trace that into uh, the internal acoustic meatus into the temporal bone there. And this is a, a CT that I found on STAT-DX. Um, this is, a, a, again, an axial cut through the left temporal bone. And again, you can see here the internal acoustic meatus, or internal auditory canal. Um, you'll hear it called both. And the seventh nerve um, kind of exiting right through that and diving towards that uh, middle middle ear. You can see some of the ossicles there. So your first quiz question for the morning. Supranuclear lesion causing unilateral facial paralysis would be expected to cause. Correct. So uh, remember that super, supranuclear input uh, to the lower face is only contralateral, upper face is bilateral. So supranuclear lesion, for example, on the right side is going to cause left sided, left sided lower face paralysis, but the left forehead or upper face still has innervation from the, the left. Central gyrus. 